When mods were first released on Xbox One, I made a video talking about what, in my opinion, at the time, were the top five options. Since then, a lot has changed. We've gotten more mods, mods have been more polished, and all around the summer has been a really good thing for the Fallout 4 modding scene. Mod authors have shifted from questioning or even hating the release of mods on consoles to supporting it, and many mod authors today, if possible, will release their mods on both platforms, which is a great change to see. With that being said, there are still a lot of of mods on consoles. How do you know which ones to download, especially considering you do have a limit? Well, that's why today I'm here to show you my updated version of the top five mods for Xbox One. Think of this video less of the number one spot is the best mod of all time and more of if I had to pick five mods to download and only five mods, these are the five mods that I would pick. Think of these as mods that in my opinion are core to the game and everyone should be experiencing and playing with. Obviously that's my opinion, so I'm sure you'll have your own and I encourage you to tell me in the comments down below what you think the top five are. With all that being said, I do encourage you guys to consider subscribing if you enjoy the content, but with that, let's get right into it. While compiling this list, I really tried to limit how many mods I chose that were just a single edition, because if you're choosing 5 mods, you don't want to limit yourself in that way. But in a couple of instances, that just wasn't possible because the one mod was so good. This is one of those two instances, the DKS 501 sniper rifle is by far one of the best sniper rifle mods for Fallout 4. If you've played Fallout 4 once, twice, or even three times, you probably realize the severe lack of a good sniper rifle there is. You do have the normal sniper rifle in the game, but that didn't do it for me. I felt like it didn't look good enough, it didn't sound good enough, and frankly, when you got to the higher end of it, it just simply didn't do enough damage for what it was boasting. I think the DKS 501 fills that gap perfectly. It's primarily on this list due to the shortcomings by the vanilla game. With all that being said though, it still does add quite a bit. There's about three reasons I really like the sniper rifle, and I'll tell you them right now. First and foremost, the nostalgia factor. The DKS 501 is the sniper rifle in previous Fallout games. In those, it wasn't called the DKS, it was called just a sniper rifle, and with this mod, you can technically recreate it. So it has all the appropriate scopes and attachments to recreate the Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas versions of this rifle. Transitioning from that, also just the customizability. There really is a lot of options with this mod. You can make it into a more DMR, medium range rifle. You can make it a very long range sniper rifle if you really just wanna sit back and pick off enemies, or if you really wanted to, a short range think pipe rifle where it's really not a large engagement distance, this gun can function there as well. There are sawed off versions and smaller stocks for stuff like that. It's a very versatile weapon that's appropriate in all instances. Last but not least, it's well balanced, which is really the biggest thing for me. A lot of other sniper mods are either really powerful or way too weak. The DKS manages to find itself in a good middle ground. With the different caliber options, you could have a lower end version that's going to be able to fire a lot more, but it won't do nearly as much damage, or the 50 cal armor piercing version where you're not going to have as much ammo or nearly as fast of a rate of fire, but you will be doing superior damage per shot. All around, the DKS is essential to your game in my opinion, especially if you're playing a sniper character, but even just to have and combat against with enemies. Power Armor mods very quickly became a craze for Fallout 4, with the changes to Power Armor making it more like a augmented suit than just a normal armor type, a lot of people started making and downloading these mods. Even personally, my two best videos on Fallout 4 are both of Power Armors, so obviously picking one of those armors as the best was difficult for me. I knew I wanted to include one on this list, but how do I pick between all of these great armors? Well, it actually wasn't that difficult, I think the Submersible Power Armor very very 
quickly started to blow all the other ones out of the water. Here's how it does that. The model and the textures are really strong in this armor, but they're really strong in a lot of the different armors. What this one really starts to stand out is with the three different helmets it comes with. It comes with the vanilla helmet that just goes with the armor as it was released, the alpha helmet, which is a little bit more Bioshock inspired, and then finally the bouncer helmet, which you probably know from Bioshock 2. All three of the helmets are really high quality and give you a nice amount of variety with the armor. Even though it's only a helmet change, it is a big part and a lot of the personality that comes with power armor. There's quite a lot of paint jobs and stuff like that you could add to the helmets to make them look different and look really sharp, but I really like how you could actually get these armors. They're very well themed, so obviously the submersible power armor is going to be kind of a aqua or oceanic theme. Well, the way you get these is by going to the different lighthouses in the game and finding the armors on the beaches, washed up, and it kind of has a little lore around them, which I do like. A lot of the other power armor mods are just plopped down in the chemistry station or some random spot on the map. I really appreciate the thought behind where these armors are and how you get them. On top of that, even though it's Bioshock inspired, I feel like this armor fits into vanilla Fallout 4 due to Far Harbor. It's appropriate in that environment and that extends to the full game with the DLC's full release. Last but not least, and probably one of the biggest parts that separates this from other power armors is the weapon. Having that drill is absolutely amazing. It really does look phenomenal and function really well as a viable, strong power armor weapon. I recently put this at the top of a top five power armor list and it continues to, in my opinion, be the best one out there. I'm sure people will disagree with me, but if you had to download one power armor mod, it would be this. I was never super into base building or the settlement system with Fallout 4. I had a lot of hype for it and was really excited for it, but I felt like the actual implementation of it was a little bit disappointing. That being said, you do still find yourself needing to build a few settlements along the way, even if you don't really want to. I personally think simply modular housing is the answer for those of us who don't want to put tons of time into settlements and for the people that do want to put tons of time into settlements. Obviously, that's an extremely difficult balance to hit, so how does the mod do that. As the title of the mod suggests, it simplifies the base building process of settlements. It gives you pieces that will easily snap together into really good looking houses that you can easily recreate and kind of mass produce if you so desire. I think Fallout 4 has good wall textures and especially with a lot of the concrete things, has some really good rustic and weird looking things. But inside the settlement, you don't want that. You want to have a hearthy or homey feel and feel safe inside of the settlement surrounded by all those turrets. Well, that's what Simply Modular Housing helps you to accomplish. You'll be able to build a really pretty house for you and your settlers, and very simply and quickly. At the same time, there's a lot of customizability here if you want to take advantage of it, but you don't have to. There is definitely an easy route and a difficult route with this mod, which I really like. But at the end of the day, it's very easy to understand and actually just jump into using it. Things are clearly organized and labeled, which may sound kind of dumb, but a lot of the other mods out there just, they'll add a thousand pieces to your settlement and it's overwhelming and you you just can't really find that exact piece you're looking for. I never had that problem using simply modular housing. I think again it finds a really good balance between complex and simple and executes it really well. I absolutely love weather mods. I'm really happy that Vanilla Fallout 4 incorporated some weather changes, especially more so over Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3, but it wasn't enough. The two big mods for weather are True Storms and Vivid Weathers. Nuclear weather's out there, but I don't think it's yet on par with these two. On consoles, the only option is Vivid Weathers. True Storms has not been ported, and I don't think the mod author is planning to do that in the near future. For that reason, I think you need to download Vivid Weathers. I don't think the game is the same without it. I can't really play Fallout 4 without a weather mod after using them for only a couple months, but still, it's such a major improvement over the vanilla game that I think it's essential. Vivid Weathers itself adds in 75 new weathers to the game. These range from heavy thunderstorms, snowstorms, dust storms, rad storms. It makes weather a more prominent force. It makes you play the game differently. It's not an afterthought anymore. Like if it's raining in vanilla Fallout 4, oh cool. But when you have a heavy thunderstorm with Vivid Weathers, 
years, you take note and it's a, some serious stuff to be thinking about. While running through that, you're going to hear the weather and it's going to scare you and affect the way you play. I think weather mods are just one of those things that once you start using them, you're never going to want to go back. It'll feel like your eyes were opened and it just makes it feel like a better game. Fallout 4 isn't a great game. A lot of people agree on this, especially after their second and third playthroughs. They realize as an RPG, it falls pretty short. Where it excels though, is as a shooting game. The gun mechanics and just shooting in general in Fallout 4 far exceeds that of Fallout 3 and New Vegas. For that reason, picking an appropriate weapon mod obviously becomes difficult. There's two big contenders, at least in my eyes, the Doom-based weapons and Modern Firearms. Modern Firearms is definitely winning that battle, at least right now. It's been out longer and has a lot more downloads, especially on Xbox One, but I think Doom-based weapons is better. The way I see the two mods is this. Modern Firearms adds in a ton of content to the game, much more than the Doom-based weapons. But what it doesn't do is add in balanced content. Although Modern Firearms Arms has a wide variety of weapons, they're all super overpowered and it really doesn't feel like they were made with balancing in mind. When you play the game with modern firearms, you'll have those few occasions where you'll be walking down and suddenly just get one shot, and you won't realize why except it's someone using an assault rifle that does 200 damage per shot. Doom based weapons isn't about that. I think Doom based weapons, although not as feature rich, is the more balanced and usable weapon mod out there right now. If you're going to do a playthrough of Fallout 4, get Doom based weapons. If you just want to go shoot shit, use modern firearms. With all that being said, why do I actually think Doom based weapons is so good? Obviously, first and foremost, it's balanced. It is really well balanced, and but more importantly, the mod was designed with balance in mind. It's not just, okay, make everything super weak. Guns that should be strong are strong, but guns that shouldn't be super strong aren't super strong. You have different caliber conversions for different damage types, and the higher calibers definitely do a lot of damage. Some of the weapons in this mod are borderline overpowered, but I think in an appropriate way. They're expensive, hard to get, and when you finally do get them, there is a really good reward for achieving it. On top of that, I think a lot of the different weapons in this mod have some personality that modern firearms and just other weapon mods in general lack. Some of the different paint jobs are just really cool and custom. Some like the different shark ones or on the Mac 11 you could get some real like street or gangster-esque paint jobs which are really nice and cool. On top of that little features like having to put on a threaded barrel on your 1911 in order to attach a suppressor or an attachment rail in order to get a laser sight. Little things like that really add to the immersion of the game and make the weapon mod that much more attractive. I'm really excited to see what other weapons Doom comes out with in the future and hopefully it'll get added to this weapon pack making it more feature rich and having more variety Right now, I think it covers all the bases. You have a LMG, a pistol mod, a shotgun mod, a few assault rifle mods, which is really all you need in Fallout. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while, and I finally felt like it was time to do so. Let me know in the comments down below if you think there's a core mod I really didn't put in this video. I really put a lot of thought into all these mods, so I hope you did enjoy. As always, I thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.